spread. Okay, we're recording. So, Do you want me to leave it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, Matt. Sorry. Go ahead, King. <laughs> so, uh, I just uh, previously, I sent an email about today's agenda. Uh, so, shall we, shall we talk about the agenda first? Uh, yeah, certainly. Okay. Uh, you see, the first of the agenda is the we can talk about the chaos com uh, to next the year's the chaos com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Hi everyone. Hi. Um, Hi. Hi, Shoya. I, I may have to leave after uh, thirty minutes because I have to attend the badging weekly meeting, so I I may just start first. Um, okay. Yeah. As most of the community members in the meeting may know, I worked with Chaos EI badging program as a season of doc intern for the past three months. Um, but actually, I came across Chaos in early this year because the research topic in my laboratory is to do some measurements of open source projects on GitHub. And uh, we found Chaos is using metrics to do similar things. So there are. Yeah, there are many junctions here I think we can utilize and uh, work together. And um, now things now we are also talking about next year's ChaosCon may be held in China. And uh, even the conference venue, as I say from last uh, last meeting's agenda, uh, meeting minutes, uh, the conference may, venue may be East China Normal University, which is a school where I'm in. Uh, and I, I really wish to have with propagandizing chaos in China and ex expand the influence in Asia area maybe. And my Chinese mentor plus um, Jiang and Quan here, um, together we are thinking of holding a chaos local meetup in Shanghai or Beijing uh, just in this year's December. So my question is, are there any suggestions from the community about how maybe uh, the better form to put this forward, how to do that or is there any support from the community? Mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely support. Um, I, think, I think the last discussion I was in, we were puzzling about how to manage it because I think you mentioned you really wanted it to be face-to-face -face, and obviously we can't get to yeah. China uh, this year. Um, and we, we, we ideally in the future, we would structure it around some other Linux event um, so that that would justify the costs for uh, several of our corporate participants um, for the travel. Um, so, but, but for this year, um, I guess the question is, do you want to do a face-to-face -face event that we collaborate with you on providing remote contributions? Uh, or do you want to, I guess, I'll leave the question there. Um. Before the before the um, next year's ChaosCon, I think uh, maybe before that ChaosCon, we need to propagandizing just um, propagandizing chaos in China for, first, uh, maybe uh, at the form of local meetups, and um, maybe that would be a small group of of people gathered in Shanghai or Beijing to talk about chaos and um, on some core members from the community can record a video or even a remote connection or something like that. So I'll, I'll make a comment. So Shoya, thanks for, thanks for thinking through this. This is awesome. So the two things we have is a potential chaos con that would probably be in 2021 would be my guess. And then a, a meetup that could occur perhaps even just in the next few weeks. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So with respect to the to the meetup, King, where what where are you located, King? Are you in Beijing? Uh, no, I'm mean, located in Shenzhen, near Shenzhen. by the Hong Kong, Shenzhen. you know? Okay. okay. Oh. So, uh, I'm, I'm now I'm now traveling <laughs> sorry, 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 yeah. I'm now traveling in Hangzhou now. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So you're pretty far away from Shanghai or Beijing, particularly. Yeah. 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 Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but you, I, I, can, I can travel. <laughs> you can travel. Okay. Because yeah. I'm, I'm. So Shoya, with respect to the meetup, um, yes. I mean, I'm personally happy to help arrange this. There, yeah. there work work with you. 
Uh, locally, I think, how long do you think the meetup would be, Shoya? Did you have a thought on this? I actually don't have too much sure thoughts. Uh, this is um, this this meetup would would be also supported by my mentor, and okay. uh, we have talked about this uh, with Ping and uh, John before. Um, okay. Maybe the 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 city will be Shanghai, and um, one day, and I, I haven't thought about too much about that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, that is why I bring this up. I I wish to receive more maybe suggestions from the community. Yeah, so, you know, William Zhang have held the ALC Apache local community in Beijing. So William is local in Beijing. And uh, I and William, are in the, we are in the same team. He's in Beijing and I'm in Shenzhen. So uh, he has some, um, some community friends uh, who are in Beijing. So I think Beijing is uh, one choice. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, Xiaoya is in Shanghai. Uh, his university is, uh, you know, the, the Chaos JSOC student, Zhu uh, Tianyi. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Xiaoya and uh, his uh, teachers, uh, Mr. Wang, uh, they are uh, very interested in Chaos. I think uh, uh, Shanghai is uh, another choice. So yeah, I think uh, Beijing and Shanghai. So Xia, uh, and uh, Xia, I want to wonder, no, wonder, uh, do you have any, uh, do you have any suggestion about the location, uh, about it, uh, about the meetup? Yeah. Beijing and Shanghai are far away from each other, right? Yes. Is it Quite more difficult. or less difficult, for example, for you, King, to get a travel authorization to go to Shanghai than it would be possibly for a student like Joya? Um, yeah, I think uh, travel uh, travel is feasible because a uh, school will um, pay for the cost. Okay. So would it be would it be possible to have a meetup in Shanghai and Beijing at the same time? Um, oh. that that also works, but I think um the place is not the biggest problem. Actually, I want to know about maybe how what what is the form to put this forward, the, a better okay. form of this meetup. Well, I think pretty easily, um, either myself or Elizabeth yeah. or Sean would be happy to provide a, like a, either a recorded or um, like a presentation about what the chaos project is. Yeah, for to sure. The, to the meetup. I mean, that could be a way to start off mm -hmm. the meetup just to introduce ourselves and, or maybe all of us, right? I mean, maybe it's better that it's not just one person, <laughs> that it's actually that's great. a, a yeah. collection of people. Um, that, that would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, maybe the meetup just starts with something as simple as that, which is just introductions and just talking about kind of the structure of, of chaos and what we're planning, well, not planning on doing, but what we're doing, um, the notion of metrics, the notion of software. Um, so why don't I, I'll jot that in the notes. And just to in, insert, um, I am actually working on an introduction to chaos, just generally that we were going to use on our website. So that is in the works, but we could also do more of a, a specific one for this event that would be a little more friendly and tailored to what we're doing here. So. Yeah, that would so be yes, great. And we could so, we could also we could also probably coordinate with um, a community member. I'm just thinking out loud here, but a community member who you know uses the chaos tooling or uses the chaos metrics or both, um, just to talk about not just the structure of the community, but then the impact um, that this work could have. So you know, I'm thinking of. There are several people, obviously, who rely on whether it's Augur or Grimoire Lab, um, just to talk about, give a little bit of perspective 
on on how they're interacting with the community. So that could be a, a second kind of either video or live talk, kind of depending on time zones. Yeah, live talks. Yes, that would be depending on the time. <laughs> um, OK. I think uh, we still have time for preparation because the meetup may be at uh, the end of this uh, month, the end of December. Okay. And um, so I think uh, the job or concerts from our side, from the side in, from China, um, is to how to get more people involved in the meetup, to letting more people know about chaos in China. Oh, quick, quick comment here. Um, so one of the things that is helping a lot, but they know source commons, which is another community, uh, is the, the translation process. So localizing things into Chinese seems to be something that is being key for this community in this case, to, to bring some more people, at least from China, uh, into the into the concept and community of inner source. So that, that may help as well. Um, and these days we are indeed running the, the commons in the, today and tomorrow. Um, and we are now playing with a hybrid model where we have people physically there in, in China, in this case. Um, and then there are people uh, in, in a virtual space. So then uh, we had some pre-recorded talks, uh, the, the things we are suggesting here. Um, but then we have some specific breakout sessions. And one of the, one of the breakout sessions was in Chinese. Uh, and then there were some others. So the specific one in Chinese is to 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 create this comfortable environment so people can uh, freely talk. And then with the idea of contributing back to the community, like okay, we were discussing about all of these topics, like forty minutes or so. In chaos, we have we have several topics, so we, we can discuss about several of them. Um, and yeah, and then we we were having live chat in in, a, in Slack in this case. That was the tool we were using. And it's it's working quite good, I have to say. So just some ideas around here. For a meetup, definitely something smaller would work as well. Um, Pre-recorded talks with a mix of physical or virtual events sounds good. And is language? I guess one thing is is um, is it okay that we speak English? Um, I've had Chinese students who speak English to varying degrees and. And would we be, to Daniel's point, I, um, cutting out people if we didn't provide translation service? My inclination is yes, that we would, and we, we don't want to. And that's just adding to Daniel's point. Yeah, but perhaps a really good way to be part of the community as a really uh, perhaps starting point would be what if we have some pre-recorded videos with subtitles? So then we add subtitles and then we ask people, hey, this is a five minutes video or 10 minute presentation. And then we have the subtitles, for instance, in Chinese. Yeah, like maybe subtitled, you mean? Yeah, so then we have someone from China specifically translating those into, into yeah. Chinese. Then we have subtitles, maybe. Yeah. Like or we could get humorous translations by running it through Google Translate. <laughs> That's, that's but yes, to your point, I agree. I, I, that may, I think if we do videos, getting them subtitled in Chinese would be very, very appropriate. I know, oh, I, th yeah. I think ahead. using English is okay. Maybe uh, we can do some translation work to uh, as. Uh, <laughs> So Shoya, did you say English is okay, at least for the videos, or did you? Yeah, I think English in the video is okay, and uh, we can help with making subtitles in the video. Okay. So I'm wondering, so I, I, I don't know if you can see the notes. I've been jotting a few things down in there. So, um, yeah, that's, that's okay. If you can't see it, I can repeat it here. So, um, so perhaps we could have, if Elizabeth is putting together a pre-recorded video about chaos, I mean, that would to me be a very sensible thing to use. Um, we could 
probably also ask and and maybe elizabeth like if you do the pre-recorded video we would be available to answer questions during the video you know so it's a pre-recorded video that you're showing but we would also be there if we can unless it's two in the morning our time um, but given the opportunity to be there maybe we could do that um, we will try to choose a sensible time zone <laughs> that's <laughs> make it convenient for yourself though too that's that's if, if it's a meetup running in china i think it's important that it works well for the for time you. the time we've been using these days is like um uh, uh, 11 p.m in the west coast in the u.s and then i woke up at 5 30 a.m <laughs> anytime <laughs> um and then maybe we could reach out to a community member to also do a pre-recorded video just about the impact of, of chaos. I don't think that would be very difficult at all to find somebody, even if it's just a five or you know five minute video, it is really not long. That wouldn't be hard. So then we could have a couple of videos. Um, I really liked the idea from Daniel about maybe breakout sessions that would be in Chinese. And so maybe we could think about what a breakout session would look like in a workshop you know do would we ask people to um think about how these metrics are meaningful would they think about what are the, the outstanding questions around metrics I, whatever the prompt might be but i think we could have maybe one or two breakout sessions in chinese given a prompt that would motivate people to talk um and then, so to me, that seems like a, with respect to a meetup, that would be two videos with maybe two, two breakout sessions and reporting back. It's not big, but it would at least start generating discussion. Yeah, that was so, the structure. Yeah. Oh, I think that is, that, that yeah. is really helpful. And yeah. uh, those sessions are, will be in Chinese as so, we are communicating together, but how to um, convey those um, discussions to other community members? So I, mean, I have, I actually have, we have money to do translations. So we have translated all of the metrics, the current chaos metrics into Chinese. Yeah, It's done. So we can obviously share those ahead of time with the people who participate in the meetups to Sean's point. Like anything that that can be in Chinese that can help um, would be great. So that's something that we can share ahead of time. I would also, you know, if, if you could record the meetups, I think there's yeah. a possibility that we could translate them back to English from Chinese and yeah. share the share the yeah. results. We can we, have the, we can read subtitles also. Yeah, we have the money to do that. Yeah. So. I mean, I think that's something that's very, and th this is the point, right, of having the translation money is to, <laughs> to do <laughs> translation. So, um, so we do have funds to, to get that done. So maybe in the meetups, yes, you run them in Chinese, but make sure to record them, uh, and then we can we can directionally come back towards towards English. Yeah, that sounds great. And then, in terms of um, promoting the meetup. So I, I think we need your help a little bit here, Shoya or King. So, you know, obviously Elizabeth can, you know, send out on Twitter the meetup, but that may not really, that may not really suit a, a Chinese audience. So, um, you know, are there, are there things that we could do like with helping with text that could be posted you know, on social media platforms in China? Are there things that we could do like with respect to you know, building a digital flyer that could be shared in China? We, we'd probably need your help in this regard because yes. I'm not very familiar with that space. Yeah, I think prorogation works may be the job from our side because China has a different media system. Mm. I think if, if you can help with uh, making up the text, that would be definitely need to translate it into Chinese again, but that would also be great. And I think we can also 
um, made up those texts by ourselves and um, maybe um, you can review, you re have a review of that in the English form. But yeah. also please, if you can ha have a, the English um, text first and uh, we can have uh, the both English and Chinese. Maybe I'm thinking there could be two forms, um, Elizabeth, like a, maybe a short form and a long form. Like a short form would just say, you know, like chaos meetup, come and see about community health analytics in whatever city on this date at this time. And here's a link to the longer discussion. And then a long form, which says, again, here's the meetup, here's the time, here's the location. Um, but then here's the structure of the day. You know, we'll have an overview from, from Elizabeth, then we'll do breakout sessions, then we'll have whatever whatever the, you know, kind of a longer form that has a structure for the day. So one is just a, there's a meetup and then the other is there's a meetup plus here's some detail. So yeah, I've, I've done a ton of, of meetups um, here in the States and in a few in, in Europe and elsewhere. Um, but I, so I would be more than happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one if we want to nail down some of these finer details and, and, and get it all together. If that would be helpful, just let me know. Yeah, I think that would be great. Awesome. I will email you. Okay. So you can also send an email to me, Isabel. Yeah, yes, thanks. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. No, this is great. Yeah, I'm excited. Did we set a location? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I just wanted to draw us back to the, you know, the pregnant to be, time. To be determined. OK. Is there a date? The date would be when? I don't see it in the notes. Shoya had said towards the end of the month, towards the end of December, okay. probably between yeah. Christmas and New Year would be All my right. guess. Yeah, that would be perfect. Oh, what is the, uh, the holiday? And um, maybe some of the community members are spending holidays and uh, it will be, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm pretty available, to be yeah. honest with you, uh, other than Christmas Day. Yeah, and same here. You know, New, New Year's Eve, it, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we're not. Gonna, we're we're following the advice of the CDC here in the United States and my family, and not traveling anywhere. Yeah, I, <laughs> 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 I mean, a lot of families are not following that advice, but you know, we're Americans. Don't take our rights away. <laughs> so sh let's look at. I'm trying to look at the. I mean, Shoya, I. Like just looking at the calendar, like, I mean, the 28th is a Monday, yeah. December 28th or yeah. December 29th, like probably in those, mm -hmm. one of those days would probably be best. Yeah. Okay, so um, I will also talk about my mentor because he would support this okay. and uh, yeah. Okay. For anything we do pre-recorded, we could, um, it, like Elizabeth's got the overview that she's going to do. We, um, other things that you want to hear about in pre-recorded form, I think you, we can set that agenda now, or you can go back to your, your advisor and we can talk about it next time. Can we talk about, do we have enough time next time? Yes. You may want to just communicate via email to, to sort that out if there are videos in addition to the one Elizabeth's putting together. Like I could see, doing one about Augur, I, briefly, I could see a five minute video from Matt and maybe each of the working groups. These are ideas, not mm -hmm. directives and brainstorming. Mm -hmm. But I'm I think sure we, okay. you said the idea, like Daniel should probably do one on inner source because that seems like a really big deal to y'all. 
do. Mm -hmm. I think we, we may communicate on e through email. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I think I can settle the date for now on this meeting. Okay. Um, and Shoya, do you, would you need a Zoom channel? You know, what, if you, how about this? If you need some computing resources, we're happy to, to help in that regard as well. I put my email in the attendance list for this week, just to make it easier to email everybody on this call. Not assuming that Joya has my email. Yeah, um, I will add my email address too. Wow, Elizabeth's using her chaos community email. Boom chat, boom, boom, boom. How can I get one of those? Just ask me. <laughs> yeah, you could just you could just tweet Matt at at Germ, and uh, he'll get the message. <laughs> get the do you want Do you want Daniel at Chaos Community? Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. All right. Well, typically in, instead of Daniel, I, I use the izquierdo, which is Daniel on my my first surname. But just if, Did, I, if I have the opportunity to choose. You do have the opportunity to choose. Oh, that's great then. So what do you want? Do you want Daniel? But yeah, basically basically the, the same you, you can see now in the notes, but at Oh, okay. That's I think Dan I mean. Daniel would be, I mean, Dan, you've, been, you've been with us since the start, Daniel. I think you should get Daniel. <laughs> okay, let's go for Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just block, block all the other Daniels from ever yeah. having that ever. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Unless you want to be called ET. And that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so used to not to, to not to get Daniel anywhere, so that's okay. Yeah, okay. I, I have Daniel this time. Thank you. <laughs> so great. sorry, I may, I may have it's to drop out for Thanks. That was, Yeah, that was no. great, Shoya. Thank you for leading this effort. Bye bye. Bye. Can... Bye. 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 Okay, so uh -huh. there's a new friend here uh, so in the meeting, uh, Clement, Clement Lee. Okay, so can he is a seat beside, beside me. Can we Hello, everyone. So Hello. I, it's Hello. time to introduce myself. I'm Clement, also from Huawei Technology in like King Gao, I'm very honored to be invited to meeting to in involve in this meeting. Mm. My work focuses on software lifecycle management in Huawei, so um, I'm very honored to talk about this uh, in this meeting. So thank you. Mm. Nice to meet you. Thank you for joining. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for yeah. coming. Good to see you. Okay, I open up my webcam. <laughs> Hi. Is there a way? This is the small thing that is. Oh, go ahead. Is it possible? Uh, never mind. Nice to meet you. I was going to ask about the nice issue with why they're Somebody not clicking. Doesn't matter. Yes, I subscribed this uh, mail list in uh, just yesterday. So King Gao is my mentor. So, <laughs> so to some, uh, so I can contribute to some work to the community and uh, work together with you. That's very nice. Sounds great. You know, I think. Um you know, one of the things that came from the meeting two weeks ago 
was really trying to focus on what the goals are from people who attend the Asia Pacific call. And honestly, the two that continued to come out were thinking about inner source metrics and tooling related to inner source, mm -hmm. uh, as well as how we can think about metrics and tooling with, uh, with respect to open source program offices inside of companies. Mm -hmm. So I think your insight will be yeah. greatly appreciated during this process as we build this out. Yeah, thanks. So King, did you want to address those issues that you had in the agenda? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I have three issues here. Sorry. Oh. Oh, I see dog. Dog is back. My, that's my dumb dog. <laughs> 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 I think this is the first one, right? Yeah. So okay, okay, Shane, you you have shared the screen, okay? Yeah. So just this is sometimes okay. easier. This is my first issue. Uh, is mapping the P pull request and the issues one by one. I see mm -hmm. Jill and the Jill Link had commented. Uh, so you can see the below. I have made a table. Uh, it's much clear. You can see the table below. Uh, yeah. I, I think this is an can interesting. Can you scroll down just a little bit, Sean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, uh, you can see the table. <clears throat> uh, the number of issues, number of PRs. So they have some scenarios. So one, zero, and uh, man, many, many issues. One, zero, and many pairs. The best is one, one and one match. The best is one issue and one PR. The, yeah. Okay, the, in other situations, for example, there's no issues here, it's just a PR. So the PR links to, uh, PR links to issue only. You know? uh, for example, there's only one issue and the many pairs pull request. So the pull request is too big. So the, this is a, the last uh, clone is a conclusion, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like, uh, you, I, I like your suggestion of the conclusion column because I think that's generally the case. You know, if, if, mm -hmm. um, if you've got an issue one, one to one, that means your pull request is tight, small, it's fixing that one issue. If it's associated, yeah, no, it, the, the logic of this is how I think about balancing these different um, issue cardinalities and PR cardinalities. And it sounds like you agree with that, King. Or no? Sorry, I'm not following you. Um, so, Georg has put a conclusion. I call this balancing or making it, you know, um, the conclusion, you know, what, it, you know, so one to one is best because it means that the issue and the PR are closely connected. Um, if there's a PR without an issue, which is a very common case, simply means that somebody's fixed something without having it create an issue. Um, if there's one issue and no, PRs, to me, that mean, it, Georg says issue links to PR only, but I don't know that that's exactly what's happening there. Usually when I see an issue without a PR, it, it just means that perhaps the issue was resolved by a PR, but the relationship was never established. Or perhaps it means the issue was never adequately resolved or resolved in some way that somehow does not involve a PR. So when it comes to creating a report, I mean, I don't know if you think these are useful to put the conclusions in or simply knowing these cardinalities to start with is uh, what's suggested up here, as you suggested up here is um, 
the best approach in terms of defining a metric. That seems like the only discussion so far that, that we have to resolve when it comes to defining the metric. Yeah, I think the, the metric, listening to this, I haven't seen this, so just listening to you talk, Sean, and to you talk, King, it sounds like the metric is the relationship between PRs and issues. That, yeah. I mean, that's like, that's the issue. Yes. I'm sorry, that's the metric. Yes. And then we could like describe why that's important, you know, because we want these things, you ultimately want these things linked together so that there's some, some logic behind issues and logic behind PRs. Um, the objectives could be described as, you know, you don't want these, it, it's to keep the number of issues and number of PRs probably more in line with one another. You don't want them to fan out too much. Um, I, also, yeah, go ahead. I also think if you aggregate this information at a repository level, you start to get a picture of the types of practices followed on a particular project. Some projects are quite good about linking pull requests to one or more issues. Other projects actually don't hardly do it at all. So there are, there are a number of sort of repository level patterns that emerge when you look at these in the aggregate. Okay. Um, and I think the table that King, you started and Georg built on, mm -hmm. um, the only reason I kind of like King's better to be honest with you, yeah. is that um, it doesn't draw a value conclusion. Yeah, and that's consistent with our general practice for metric definitions is that we're not giving you a dashboard that says mm -hmm. red, yellow, blue, or red, yellow, green. Um, so yeah, one-to-one -one might be best in one context, but it actually may not be <laughs> best in another context. It's hard for me to know when one-to-one -one is, is best. Yeah, like in the case of, for example, something on the scale of Kubernetes, it would be an enormous amount of labor to follow the, the best practice as gear has classified it. So I think the table that you put forward, King, you know, we could add a column that's not about best, but just kind of describing what that is. So the first row would just simply say, this is, you know, this is just a one-to-one -one relationship. There's one issue for one pull request. Mm -hmm. The second row is the, I guess I'm reading that as there's one issue for many pull requests. Yeah. Is that? So it requires many pull requests to close out the issue. Right. And then vice versa for the next row. And then there's just a random, then the fourth row is there's a random PR with no associated issue. And then for the fifth row, there's an issue that is currently probably not being addressed as, right. as or at least addressed in the code. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the column would be better suited to describe what the relationship is than to talk about too big or best or anything like that. Yeah, and, and I think Georg's suggestion is good for people who want to then apply this metric and make judgments about the valence, the value of each practice in the context of a repository. Um, that wouldn't prevent you from using the metric for that purpose. It just keeps the metric definition value neutral. Yep. And that's point. I have a question about this. If so, I think you said this. Sean, you would aggregate the total number of PRs and the total number of issues to you get could, your ratio? You could do it either the way I would actually do it on a pull request and issue by issue basis and then aggregate those relationships. So one So keep PR, the linkage. Yeah. So that for example, if you do it, if you then aggregate by you, take, you do this calculation and this measurement for each individual pull request and then aggregate the ratios 
across those combinations, you're getting a, a picture of the repository that can't be um, heavily biased by, for example, one pull request that closes 104 issues. Um, if you did it, so if you did it by all pull requests and all issues without individually calculating, then then you you introduce bias into the statistic that lets one or two events skew the whole view of things. So you could look at number of pull requests with different ratios um, in like a bar chart or a dot plot, for example. Then Daniel okay. may have a view of this as well um, or be and better ideas for how to think about it. While, while you were talking, I, we've had, um, so we've been working in Grumar Lab about uh, adding this feature by GitHub where they have link. Uh, uh, so for a given issue, you have all of the pull requests that are part of this or the other way around. So for a given pull request, you have all of the issues that are part of this. However, I think this, the, the, the best approach or the best practice depends like a lot in the infrastructure we are analyzing. So for instance, in, in GitHub is uh, cheap to add commits to a given pull request or even to add several pull requests or so. So it's it's something that is, let's say, allowed in the process, right? Right. Uh, while if you go to some other tooling, uh, for instance, uh, Gabri, uh, you can only have like one commit That's for true. each uh, chain set. So it's probably easier to find this one-to-one -one relationship in, in Gabri than in GitHub. Uh, and this is because of the tooling itself. Yes, so, I, I yeah, agree. I'm a bit, yeah, I'm a bit reluctant about using this is the best uh, thing to to use as a, as, a, as a software development practice because this heavily depends on first the tooling and second, what you think is the best approach, that's all. So uh, I was thinking about that. So that would that would lead you towards King's example, knowing that, and, and Ildiko gave a great overview of, of Garrett for the evolution group uh, and I get how this would be very different in, in Garrett than it would be in GitHub or GitLab. And, and even more if we, if we bring other communities as the Linux kernel that they, they've been using main list for the code review process. Uh, so then literally they are using emails to review each other, kind of. So, um, yeah, so that, 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 that depends on the, on the tool, that's all. But I agree, in general, that probably one to go on is a, very, a good approach. So uh, the question I have, King or Clement, is this, is this one to one perhaps a good practice that you have in Huawei or do you think that is a good practice? Okay, we want to the uh, one and one, one issue, one peer link is the best practice. We want to, uh, we want to all the developer in our company uh, who contribute mm -hmm. in the community, they can, uh, if we, they want to uh, start a pull request, they must uh, to start an issue before they start a pull request. Mm -hmm. They must uh, to uh, describe the issue, what's the function, or, or what's the vulnerability or what bug they have fixed. And uh, mm -hmm. after uh, they start a uh, request, they can link to the issue. So uh, we wanted to this best, best practice to uh, to how, how to extend in our in our uh, in our company's developer. So mm -hmm. I so I start uh, I just open this uh, this issue to. Yeah. Uh, want to talk about it? Uh, it uh, can we uh, metrics the uh, how many issues and how many mm -hmm. requests have the one one and one link together? Yeah. Yeah, it starts by having the information, right? So, what what do you think if this metric is simply, or we have a, like a simple metric that we say this is the uh, the percentage of issues that that have a pull request or the other way around? So then we have like uh, values over one or under one, depending how the community works. And then depending on your specific internal project, then for you, in this case, King and Huawei perhaps is, if you have 
one, basically over time in a consistent way. That means that you are following some good practices. In some other cases, maybe you can see that this number flows over or under that one. So then you, you decide what to what to do. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It, it makes sense to me. I had just yeah. shown if you scroll down. Yep. Hang on. I just added a template for the metric. I just called it ratio. Okay. Put it in the metric. We can worry about the name later, but it's to, to Daniel's point that this, whatever the ratio is, whatever's on top and whatever's on, you know, if, if it's the issue on top or the PR on top. It's highly context dependent. But then yeah. to Daniel's point, like if you have a, if at Huawei, for example, you're looking for a ratio that is one over time, that's just a best practice that's, that's in Huawei. And they always want to angle towards that. Great, here's the ratio. Mm -hmm. um, but then to Daniel's point too, um, and you may be an organization that's willing to live with some other variation of the ratio, which is mm -hmm. cool as well. And you know that you're usually within target, or you can see the change over time, right? You want to, mm -hmm. you 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 do see that your ratio is poor at the moment, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. um, and then changes internally bring that towards one. Yeah, and then probably we may need some more context, and we are now running out of time. But um, yeah, like number of pull requests with no issues link, or the other way around. So then it's not just the ratio, but something else. But yes, we, we can close today. <laughs> cool. We made it through one issue, King. Yeah. <laughs> not in. We're not even done, but we had started one issue, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, do we do we want to quickly? take a look or do we want to just call time at the I think it's time okay. it's 8 50. all right um well, I think this is a good discussion um should we begin the development of this metric in in this working group or Matt um where where have you put where have you located it in the spreadsheet no. I put it in evolution just because okay. I think this was this this issue showed up in evolution okay So it can continue there too. Okay. I will make sure to make this part of the evolution call that starts in nine minutes. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you right. in about nine, Sorry, nine minutes. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Good to meet you, Clement. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Bye. 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 Bye.